offer easy installation with greater power and flexibility. To install the valve actuator and retrofit linkages on globe valves, follow these simple steps. To find valve bonnet type and install teeth if needed. Teeth are required if using a threaded type valve. Place the clamp over the top of the valve. Tighten evenly using the two screws provided. Install the supplied nut on the threaded valve stem. Additional nuts may be required. A nut is not required on a notch type stem. Install the stem adapter on the valve stem located just under the nut or notch. Tighten with a thumb screw first, followed by a stem wing nut. The stem adapter will rise upward as the wing nut is tightened. Install the linkage riser. Align the red centering device on the linkage riser with the top of the stem adapter. This ensures proper alignment from the valve stem to the actuator stem. Tighten with the provided four screws using a four millimeter wrench. Discard the centering device. Slide the actuator down the linkage riser until the valve stem and the coupler click together. Slide the coupler lock down. Tighten the actuator and the linkage riser using the two screws provided. Note the teeth should line up. Set up the direction switch and failsafe switch in the desired position. Power up and push adaption button. The installation process is quick and easy, and because one size fits most globe valves, identifying the valve manufacturer is not necessary in all cases. Bolimo globe valve actuators and retrofit linkages feature ease of use, unmatched reliability, and a five-year warranty. Customers can also take advantage of comprehensive customer service, as well as multi-region and multi-time zone technical support. So, uh, just a couple comments about that. One, they talked about the four millimeter wrench that comes with each of these kits. So, just in case you don't all have a four millimeter wrench. <laughs> um, and what's the other one? I was going to mention about it. it. It's a very nice solution. Like they said, it's easy to assemble. Uh, they gave it to a bunch of us sales guys at our last sales meeting, and everybody was able to assemble one in less than 10 minutes. And it's, that was just a bunch of dumb sales guys, you know, guys that are professionals out there. That, that was up in a steel structure with other parts of the way. Yeah, right. Yeah, that's it. 95 <laughs> 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 And our hard hat safety right. safety yeah. for us. We're right. Right. rolling out the drive. You got to keep your first yeah. foot on. <laughs> <laughs> sure it was. <laughs> <laughs> they really are easy to install. They are. They did look, they did look easy. <laughs> yeah, any of you work on uh, rooftop units with economizers? <laughs> well, we, we do have a new economizer controller, just in case you ever run into that. Video here on that. It's called the Zip Economizer. Before I started, was everybody able to hear that when I was playing? I'm Daryl Daniels, and I'm here to talk about Blamo's new Zip Economizer. Well, the Blamo Zip Economizer is developed with uh, energy codes in mind, and it's also developed to be user friendly for the technicians. You don't have to worry because whatever is plugged in, the menu is configured exactly for what it's plugged in. The Zip Economizer has unique features, such as a patented setup. The patent setup allows the user to enter a zip code. By entering the zip code, it automatically sets the climate zone and a, a high limit changeover for the economizing situation. This maximizes the energy capability of the economizer. It also has easy to read <coughs> display, which allows it to be used in very extreme conditions that you find on rooftops. It also has plug and play. The plug and play allows the user to automatically set the, the menu structure based on what's attached to it. So it makes it very easy to set it up. In addition, it has onboard information. So you don't need to use the manual because you push the button and it tells you more about the how to set the product up and also the alarm. Additionally, we have the acceptance test. With acceptance test, it allows you to commission the unit to verify everything is properly working within the economizer and the rooftop unit. In addition to that, there's a manual mode. The manual mode allows the user to override certain functions. 
uh, for service capabilities. And uh, we also have fault detection and diagnosis. You're able to identify problems. The user can find out through our remote alarm output of, of a problem that exists and uh, call the service tech to have it fixed right away. And we have a monitor design. Our monitor design allows for future growth of the unit in the same platform. So we're gonna come up with more energy savings features in the future. In short, the Zip Economizer provides fast route to reliable energy savings. To get more information on the Zip Economizer, please visit us at ZipEconomizer.com. And that was all I had for you today. Any questions about anything we covered, or even if we haven't covered it, anything about the limo? Yeah, he's got a question. I've got a question for you. <laughs> Tell us more about the uh, petition, the feedback petition on it. Mm -hmm. uh, something, getting some discussion, we might look into that on critical grounds. Uh, okay. Uh, I was wondering if you had one to see what it looks like, or are they available on any actuator? Or? We have feedback tensionometers uh, available for our non-spring. I don't remember if we have anything. Do we have any built into the Springer turn models? I don't no, believe we do. On page 5-10 in this book, it's in the accessories. Auxiliary switches and potentiometers are shown there. And the way they work, it's a device that clips onto the top of the non-spring actuator. Yeah, I don't see any for the uh, any potential outers for the spring return models. Only the non spring. That's okay. Right there? You yeah, also have Yeah. Okay, so these, these will clip right on top. There's ridges inside of the uh, non spring actuator. Remember if I like this, these ridges along the side are where the tensionometers and or auxiliary switches are in. And then you end up removing this and then it would also clip into the clamp of the two holes. And then this can actually position the character to clip it to the top of the potentiometer or the auxiliary. Other questions? Yes, please. I got an answer, thanks. Oh, okay. Jackson, We've got a group of people that are interested in one particular product of ours. I'm also welcome to uh, more than willing to come to your facility and talk about that as well. Uh, don't forget the evaluation forms. We're also going to have a little drawing for a little giveaway here. Thank <laughs> you. 